Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm going to show you how to make and save custom shapes inside of Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you take a look at the shape that I have up on the screen right now, this is actually a text shape and a shape created from an image. So I'm going to show you how to do that, uh, how to create shapes from text, how to create shapes from images, and how to combine shapes together to make something that's a little bit different. So I use shapes a lot for watermarks. I also use them for social media and business cards and things like that um, that I work with all the time. I know a lot of people are using the CC libraries and that's also a good option. But for me, I guess old habits die hard and uh, I don't use CC libraries hardly ever. So a lot of the times I'll just keep basic things that I use like these right here, like social media business icons. And then I have my little watermark here that I use sometimes too. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I just want to show it to you really quickly. So if I add this here, I can just kind of keep that in the corner and change the color, um, add a stroke, gradients, whatever I need. Uh, but I can also make this as big as I want to and bring down the opacity here to about, um, I usually make it about 5%. It's probably not visible on screen, so I'm going to bring that up to about 10 percent or so just so that you can see this. So I know a lot of photographers use Photoshop to edit their images. So maybe you might want uh, to keep a little logo mark or something like that in your shapes as well. You can also use this as a design element, you know, just like a subtle shape in the background or whatever. Um, but the point is that you can make this as big or as small as you need to. So shapes are vector based so you can adjust the size and the color very easily. But just because the shapes are vector doesn't mean that you can save your logos inside of Photoshop. So if you're creating logos, you can't save this file out as an EPS file or, you know, like a, a vector based file because Photoshop creates raster files with embedded vector data. Basically shapes are going to be your embedded vector data and you can edit them inside of Photoshop inside of a PSD file and they will keep their vector information but you cannot actually save this. So I hope that makes sense. So if you are creating logos I would strongly suggest using a vector based program like Illustrator or uh, a program like Inkscape, which is a really good vector-based program and it's free. So I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description for Inkscape. But for those of you who just don't want to learn another program or you just for some reason want to create your uh, logos inside of Photoshop, I would recommend designing with shapes and text and using those to create your own unique shapes for logo marks and watermarks. So here I'm going to show you four different ways to create shapes. Before we get started, I'm going to turn this off and I just kind of wanted to show you about the shapes in general. So you have all of these. These are all the basic shapes right here and then you have the custom shapes tool. This is the one that we're going to be using, but I want to start here um, just with a random shape. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool. I'm going to change the color like to this blue color and then I'm just going to make a shape make another one overlapping it and another. Okay, so I have these three shapes here. I'm just going to grab all three shapes and you can see that I have this outline right here where these shapes overlap. So when you create a shape, you're only going to get this outside area right here. So if I come in here and go to edit, define custom shape, it's giving me the outside of that. So all of these inner paths don't really matter. It's only going to be this on the outside. So I can easily save this. I'm going to go to File, Custom Shape, and I'm just going to save this. And then I can come in here, but I can come in, grab it, make it small, make it huge like that. And then I can come in and change the color, Let me get a, a different color of blue. And you can see how easy it is to um, create just using one basic shape and then just changing the size and color. I'm back to my three basic shapes. I want to show you how to work with these. So I'm going to select all three of these and I'm going to come here to layer 
combined shapes. The first one is the Unite shapes, which is basically going to give you all of this exterior and it's going to cut out all of your paths from the inside. So it's going to be one shape uh, minus all of the inside paths here. Uh, this one right here is going to subtract everything that is not overlapping the very last layer right here. So all of these will basically be removed. The only thing that will stay is probably all of this area right here. So if I just click that, you'll see how it removed all of the top layers and then just left everything that did not have an overlap. Let's go back in here. This one right here, it'll get rid of all of the outside and only this will stay. So if we click on that, you can see how it's only kept the area that's overlapping on all three of these shapes. And then you have this one right here and this is going to subtract all of these middle areas. So I've already created a shape but if I come in here and I go to edit define custom shape you'll see that it has been grayed out. I need to make sure that I have that shape selected and then I can come in here define custom shape so just make sure that it's selected so I'm going to come in here and choose Define Custom Shape and you can see how it's giving me this cutout. Go there and now I can just make this shape as many times as I want to. So let me just delete those. So I want to show you how you can create shapes using uh, raster images. So J this is JPEGs and PNG files. I'm going to go ahead and bring in this JPEG file. This image is from unsplash.com. I'll leave a link down in the description for this as well. I'm going to make it bigger. This is going to work best when you have very simple colors like we have right here. And just choose an image that has a, a clear focus like we have here. I'm going to come up to select color range and I'm using sampled color. I'm going to sample from here and you can see that it's left a lot of rough area right here. This might make a really interesting shape, but I'm just going to go ahead and add more to it. So I'm going to just press that little plus here and just kind of go through and click. And then I'm going to click OK. And it's made a selection of the heart for me. Now if I came in here and went to Edit, Define Custom Path, it would not work. I do have the selection, but I haven't created a path yet. So I need to create a path before I'm able to create a custom shape. You're going to create a path by uh, using the path tool. That's going to be this little icon right here. If you don't have it right here in your side panel, you can come up to window and then paths from here. You're going to use this little icon. Make sure that you do have a selection and then this little icon will make a work path from your selection. All you have to do is click it. It automatically will create a path for you. Now you can come back up, go to edit define custom shape and now we have that heart in there. So I've just created a custom shape. So I have this path and if I come back in here and I click anywhere outside of it you can see that my path is not showing so if I come back in here it's going to be grayed out again. I need to make sure that the path is actually selected in order for me to be able to make a custom shape out of it. Okay, just in case you get stuck there, it's not the actual layer that needs to be selected, it's the actual work path that you need to select. Now I'm going to come over here to the text tool and I'm going to show you how to make custom shapes from text. I'm going to delete this because we don't need it anymore. I've already gotten my shape from it. And I'm just going to type something here. I'm going to make it pretty big. You can't come in here and just make a custom shape from text text. You'll have to actually create a work path for this as well. So I have this right here and I want to create a custom shape from it. What I'm going to do with this is come into type and I'm going to choose create work path. And the reason I chose create work path rather than convert to shape is because we need this work path showing up in order to create the actual shape. So we have this com uh, define custom shape available to us now because we created that work path. Let me undo that. So I just brought it back to where it was actual text and I'm going to come in here to type and choose convert to shape. Now when I do that the, the um, 
shape is available right here, but for some reason that uh, define custom shape is not available here. So you do need that the actual work path showing up here. So I'm going to come up here and create work path. I just need that to be visible in order to create a uh, custom shape out of it. If I wanted to combine this with another shape, I couldn't do that from here. I'd actually have to turn this into a shape. So I'm going to come here to type and I'm going to convert this to a shape. So now um, this is a shape and then I can come over here to my custom shapes tool. I'm going to come here to custom shapes, make sure that I have that uh, heart selected that we just created. And I'm just going to drag this over like this. I'm going to put it underneath because I want the heart to stay intact, but I want uh, to cut out the lettering on the inside of the heart. So I'll get this, this negative space effect here. I'm going to grab both of these and then I can come here to uh, layer, combine shapes, and I'm going to subtract. So that's just going to give me this style that we looked at a while ago. So this is not a shape yet, but I have that selected. I have, this is the work path that I have uh, selected and I'm going to come up here to edit. Define custom shape, click OK, and now I have that shape in there. So you can make it, um, you know, any size, change the color really easily. So if I had tried to do this with just the text, so let me just undo all of this that I just did. Okay, so I'm back to my type right here. I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a work path like it, I had tried to do before. So the problem here is if I try to combine this work path with another shape, it's not going to work because this is not a shape. So this type or this text has to be a shape and not a work path if you're combining it with another shape. If you just want to create a, a shape out of the text alone, then you would create a work path. So just remember that, turn it into a shape if you want to combine it with another shape, turn it into a work path if you want to create a custom shape just out of the text itself. Okay, so if I did this and I come in here and I grab that heart and I try to do the same thing here, I'm going to bring that underneath and then I grab this because it's not a shape, but I can, I'm going to grab that uh, right here. So I have both work paths selected, but I still have to combine these shapes. So I'm going to come here to layer, combine shapes, and you can see that it is now grayed out. So just remember combining this with another shape, you have to turn it into a shape. And again, that's done right here. So you have create work path and convert to shape. This one right here is combining it with other shapes. And this one right here is just turning it, uh, turning the text directly into a shape on its own. I hope that was clear. If you would like to see how I would prepare an image like this in order to create a custom shape or more detail about this, go ahead and let me know in the comments and I might do something a little bit more in depth about using images to create custom shapes. If you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.